Hey guys, back again with another array problem. This one's going to be really quick, but I think it does point out again another important data set here. So this is going to this the elegant solution is going to use a set, which we'll talk about later on. But this problem is pretty simple. So given an array of integers, find if the array contains any duplicates. So we're returning just a basic Boolean value here. We don't have to return what that duplicate value is, but to return true if any values appear at least twice in the array and it should return false if every element is distinct. Okay. So example one, one, two, three, one. So there's a duplicate. One is duplicated here. Example two, all these elements are distinct. Example three, there's a bunch of ones, bunch of threes, bunch of fours, bunch of two. Okay, cool. So pretty simple. And again, my brute force intuition is to let's just compare every value to every other value. If they're ever equal, then we return true, it does contain a duplicate. Otherwise, if we go through all the elements and we don't have any problems, we'll just return false. It doesn't, every element is unique, it doesn't contain duplicates. Okay. So for int, instead of our basic for loop here, and again, we're gonna have it bounded to nums on length minus one because we're gonna start J at I plus one. So we don't perform any redundant comparisons, right? Like if you're ever doing, if you ever have to do a nested for loop, Make sure that you're not doing a redundant comparison, right? So redundant, especially in in this problem, because if you start at j at zero, as soon as they point to the same element, you'll get that this will always return true. It'll always contain a duplicate. So especially with this one, you have to make sure that they're always checking distinct elements. So we're gonna start it at i plus one. We're gonna make sure it's less than numbers on length. The j, the inner for loop will go all the way to the end. And then if nums i is equal to nums j. So if the integer values are ever equal, then we return true. Otherwise we return false, right? So if they never, if they're never equal, it doesn't contain any duplicates. And we also have to address if it's, if it's empty. So if the list is empty, it can't contain duplicates. So we should return false, right? So if num dot, Length is equal to zero, we're going to return false just right off the bat. Okay, let's see how this runs. Okay, accepted the, the test case here. This first one, again, one. Let's submit it. Okay, so time limit exceeded. Look at the details here. It passed all the test cases, but it just it just took way too long. Right. And the reason this is again an end switch solution. So what's probably happening is they're probably giving us a integer array that's huge. And the reason this is a problem is probably because they want to see if you could do it without without doing this end switch solution. Okay, so let's get rid of this. This is pretty bad. So is there a way to do a one pass linear solution like we did with max profit and like we did with Tucson? The answer is yeah, absolutely. Right. And like I said earlier, we're going to be using something called a hash set. So a hash set is really cool because a hash set in Java is like a set and set theory. It only keeps track of distinct values, right? So if you have a hash set and you add the element one to it a hundred times, when you print out the value of the hash set, it'll just have a single one. It'll be, it'll just have one element in it, right? So if you try to add a duplicate, it'll just ignore it and it won't actually do anything. It won't throw an error. It just won't do anything, which is really good, right? Because all we want to do is just keep track of duplicates. So hash set integer set is equal to new hash set. This is the syntax we're defining a hash set in Java. And pretty much what we're going to do is going to be pretty simple, right? So for each integer and nums, we're going to add it to the set. And then we return if, so we're going to each add, we're going to add each integer to the set. And let's assume that we had a nums that looked like this, right? Super simple. This obviously contains a duplicate. In this case, our set will look like this. So if there is a duplicate, the length of the set should be different from the length of the array. Alternatively, if our nums look like this, then our set would look like that as well. So, and this is a curly brace, by the way, I use curly brace to represent sets. So it's pretty easy. So we just return if hash set so if it's set dot, I believe it's length. Let's see. Sometimes you have to look this stuff up. Half set. Length. 
Okay, so it's dot size. Okay, great. So set dot size if it's equal to nums dot length. If it equal return false, it does not contain a duplicate. Else return true. Okay, gotcha. However, if you ever have an if statement that looks like this, or if something is true, then return a Boolean, otherwise return the opposite of that Boolean, you can just simplify this to one line. So you can return if set.size. So if, if set.size equals to nums.length, right, then we want to return false. So we just reset this to does not equal, right? So if they're different sizes, then we return true, right? The same would evaluate to true. And if they're the same size, the same number value to false, which would give us your answer. We can do these comments. And okay, let's see if this will work. Oh, I forgot my uh, semicolon here. That's all. Okay. okay. Great, and already we went from a time limit exception to uh, five MS runtime, so that's in seventy percent of most job online submissions. So it's 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 doing pretty well. I think maybe an alternative solution would be to if the element is already in the set, then you can just immediately terminate and return true there. So we can, let's actually try that, right? So for each end, if set, you can also do set dot contains i so. Set is also going to be an O1 search operation, I believe. So this this is actually a pretty efficient function here. Let's set that contains I. So if everybody's seen it before, you return true. Otherwise, you will add it, right? And then we can just if it's if it's going to through here, then we just return false. If it's never If it's never, if it's only going to add elements and it's never going to fall into this if block, right? If it never contains it, we can just return false or immediately. Let's try this solution. Okay, so it's, it's roughly the same. Um, but you can see how using the set makes this problem a lot simpler and a lot faster, right? So whenever you see something like duplicates, you want to think about using something like a set which keeps track of unique values, right? It's a really basic way to use a set, and we'll have more set problems later on, but Real quick question today, just kind of wanted to introduce another array problem and the concept of the set to you guys. So again, if you guys have any further questions, leave them in the comments and you know, hope to see, hope to see you guys next time.